Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing Podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usha Motuzaita Pinkavichin. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 706 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. Uh, today we decided to discuss a little bit our uh, last summer uh, organ trips. So uh, we hope you will enjoy our conversation about all the recitals that we played in various countries. Osha, do you remember where we traveled? Of course I remember. <laughs> do I need to name it? Okay, so our first concert trip was to Warsaw. The in Poland, uh, where we played on the uh, romantic style instrument built by Schlag on Zone. On Zone. Uh, so let's list all of them, okay? Uh, uh, to Warsaw, right? Yes. Uh, at the end of May, and then. And then. Uh, and then in August, we made two trips. One trip was uh, to Denmark. To Denmark. To, and the third one was to Latvia. And uh, in between of Warsaw and Denmark, I, I traveled alone to Ukraine, to Lviv, to play two recitals there. So let's start from the top. Um, what was uh, the most uh, important memory from you, uh, from Warsaw? Well, I was very excited because this uh, Evangelical Reform Church, Evangelical Reform Church, yes, uh, it was the only church in Warsaw which wasn't um, uh, bombed during the Second World War. And it has this historical instrument, which I mentioned already before, uh, built by Schlag und Zone. And the most memorable thing was actually very beautiful stained glasses. And the church was very spacious and uh, because it was a confirmation Sunday uh, on which we played this recital, there was a long and really nice service that we attended and people sang hymns very loudly. I really enjoyed that. What was the most memorable thing for you with this one this trip? How we tried to uh, play a piece for two manuals on one manual, in Mozart's Fantasia in F minor. And it actually worked pretty well because originally we usually play it on two manuals. Uh, one of us is playing on the main manual and the second part is played on the secondary manual. Both of them could be either with or without 16 feet, depending on the composition of the mixture. Uh, but but the second manual on that organ was, um, like in many German romantic organs, uh, much weaker than the, se than, than the first manual, than the main manual. So we couldn't um, uh, play it... Uh, in balance with each other. So we decided to play it on one manual, on, on one manual, but Osha played it one octave lower. And I think it sounded really well because this piece, the arrangement of this piece for four hands uh, doesn't have pedals. So having you no, know, my second part played an octave lower gave this nice foundation sound. Plus, we had 16 feet already in the manual, so it was like double um, gra gra uh, gravitas, so to say. And of course, another nice thing was because 
we could understand uh, most of what Polish people were speaking to us in Polish, which, which was really nice. And we also tried to speak Polish ourselves, so it was a good practice session for us too. Like, you know, three days of uh, intensive Polish language course. Right. And of course, another thing I need to say why I really liked that service, you know, confirmation service, because our host, uh, the organist who invited us, he improvised wonderfully. He is truly a very good improviser and brilliant organist. Michal Markuszewski is his name. Yes, it's just amazing. Really unbelievable. I think this congregation should really be very happy to have such a wonderful and you know, high skillful organist. Okay, so now uh, let's turn our ten attention to Ukraine. Yes, and now I think you need to talk about it because you no, know, I'll just wait it for you at home, worrying and you know eating actually a lot of Stress junk eating. food. Yes. Yeah, the long it was a long trip because uh, flights are forbidden to Ukraine during the time of war. But uh, I really wanted to support Ukraine and everybody probably remembers how I created many meditations based on Ukrainian folk songs and Osha and I played many of them in recitals in Lithuania and abroad and on YouTube. Uh, so the time came when, when organizers from Lviv Organ Hall actually invited uh, invited us both to to come to Lviv but Oshra uh, for health reasons cannot sit uh, let's say on bus on buses or or trains for a long time so she will have to wait until the flights are back operational and the war is over and it's safe to fly uh, to come back to Ukraine. But uh, this time I went alone and it was a long uh, bus, 18-hour uh, bus uh, drive, bus ride. And um, um, basically what uh, was the most memorable from this trip is probably how how sincere uh, Ukrainian audiences are uh, during the concert. In both concerts I played uh, the same program but with a little bit different uh, anchor based on Ukrainian folk songs and I uh, also premiered my uh, variations on Ukrainian national anthem organ solo version. And um, in both evenings, uh, the audience stood up when they first heard the theme, which is understandable because it's their national anthem, even though I harmonically altered uh, the harmonization, basically distorted a little bit that harmony, but it was still very much recognizable. So after the theme, they, they started to applaud and I didn't understand why, right? I thought they should wait until the end, but obviously a lot of people don't read the programs. They didn't realize it's a variation cycle, but, um, but so it was still very moving to, to hear people so, so appreciative of their national anthem. And what happened later is that they sat down and I continued to play. And after the first variation, somebody also started applauding because the theme is, uh, was clearly audible too, but not as much, you know. So, so then they realized that it's a longer composition and uh, waited until the end. Um, yeah, it was very moving experience to go to Lviv during the time of war and support Ukrainian people with the music that was dear to them. 
Yes, and I was really, you know, proud of you, but also very fearful. And I was so thankful that, you know, you did not have any accidents in there and no air alarms and alerts. Yeah, like a couple of weeks before my trip, there was this uh, terrible bomb uh, rocket uh, missile strike to, I think, um, one of the uh, living, uh, living, uh, basically, Bas apartment buildings. Yes, it destroyed an apartment building. Yeah, so and, uh, eight or more people died there. And then after you came back, I think in, t in two days we started to have like this alerts at night, you know, sirens going on almost, almost like every night, every other night. Yeah, so I was lucky that there was no air alarms and uh, I could um, perform in peace because if there was air alarm, then people had to wait in the special shelter that they have in the concert hall until the air alarm is over and it's safe to come back. And it sometimes it lasts for three hours. So it's it's very, you know, difficult for people if it's a full house. And both evening, Saturday and Sunday, it was a full house, sold out uh, house of three or four hundred people. Plus, I think I, I read on the internet that in both events we sold like um, additional, additional, um, seats for like 120 people yeah, yeah. extra from what we usually do so we've just you know set down like extra chairs for people the organ is from pre-war pre-second world war era uh, from czech uh, maker rigger rigger clause and um it's not the same rigger clause that we have in Lithuania in uh, built in the 1980s or 70s. Uh, squeaky sounds, high, high, uh, high, sh sh sharp sounds. Um, it's a romantic instrument. It's very wonderful. Um, and the church, the the hall, which is a former Catholic church, Mary Magdalene Church. And um, uh, it has beautiful acoustics suitable for not only con concerts for organ music, but for chamber music and orchestral music as well. So it, it's a very, very busy cultural venue. Although you complained a little bit that, you know, the keyboards, manuals are very sensitive. Yeah. And you need to be very careful, you know, and to control your touch. Yeah, it has electro-pneumatical uh, action in perfect shape and, and I had to be very very careful with <laughs> yeah. my touch yes if, uh, after. especially after playing so much at St. John's you know with a heavy tracker exactly action so um, then of course Denmark came uh, in August um, uh, we traveled to Denmark Svendborg, Svendborg Organ Festival um, we already traveled there four years ago. Yes, and I enjoyed this trip so much more better because we did not get lost while changing from train to train because four years ago we got lost while changing from train to bus. So anyway, entire trip went without any accidents. And last time, four years ago, I was really, really sick. And although it happened before, when pandemic hit, you know, the world, I'm somehow convinced that at that time I really had a COVID because all the symptoms and everything was very similar and I had such a hard time that time playing that big recital. But this time everything went really well. And it was nice to go back to the place that we already knew. Do you think you were patient zero? I don't know. For COVID? I don't know. Yeah, we we played on four manual um, Marcus and organ. It was recently um, renovated and um, enlarged with a special swell swell division. So it's now suitable for 
even more romantic music. And um, however, I was uh, happy that I this time I chose to play baroque pieces on it, solo baroque pieces. Yeah, because it's in 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 concept, it's still very much neo baroque instrument. So modern pieces and baroque pieces sound much more convincing. And of course, here we played again, you know, our uh, duet version of Ukrainian national anthem variations on Ukrainian national anthem. And with us did uh, a few solo Ukrainian pieces. And it was really nice because, you know, people from Ukraine, refugees from Ukraine came to our concert. Some of them were and even holding, like, you know, the... Uh, uh, posters, 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 yes. When we bought, you know, after the concert, we could see, you know, them holding, you no know, posters that we are from Ukraine and we really enjoyed and were really touched by our playing. And I talked with one woman from Ukraine and I hugged her and we both cried actually and it was really, really very touching experience and moving experience. Really touched my heart. And of course we had a very wonderful dinner after concert with, you know, Ture. Ture, Ture Bjorn Larsen. Yes, he was our host, you know, the man who organizes these festivals. Uh, organist of the St. Um, Nikolai Church. Yes, and of course on the day of our recital we attended his church service as well and heard him playing and we enjoy his postlude so much. It was romantic composer, uh, Danish romantic composer. Actually, I haven't heard him before. Nils Gade. But uh, it's really composer worth of, you know, playing and considering to adding to your repertoire. So we um, basically looked up his music and um, acquired some of his organ works. It's really beautiful yeah. music and worth, worth much more attention than uh, we yes, currently uh, give. Yeah. And after this concert, you know, we had a very long and meaningful conversation with Ture about, in general, about the situation in Europe, you know, and how things are going with the war. And yes, it's it's nice, you know, to see, to meet people abroad that think similarly as we think and, you know, feel the same. So it was really, really nice. That understand, you know, problems and 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 think about things and know the history really well too, which not often happens now, especially in the Western countries. After this trip, I sent him a link to a documentary called "The Soviet Story." Um, it it was uh, funded by European Council and. Uh, produced by Latvian uh, director and um, it's it's a story about basically how Soviets built their empire and all the terrible things that they did but uh, this story is directed f for Western people yes. for li people living yes. in the Western countries and in the first five minutes, they mention Ukraine and the great famine, uh, Holodomor, where eight or nine million people perished in the winter. Yes. Um, so it was great to come back to Denmark. Uh, this is a beautiful um, town. Uh, most of the time... Um, I think um, uh, elderly Danish um, tourists come to visit it, right? Yes, it's, it. it's <coughs> excuse me, it's attraction for tourists, you know, to come to see all the boats, because we have like a boat, boat museum on the coast, and it's, it's really nice. It's a quite nice, you know, town to spend time, to relax, you know, maybe to take a boat, you know, and to 
and to go into the sea. Okay, so then after Denmark, we moved to to Latvia. I spent a few days there, played one recital, plus uh, tried out and recorded on four additional organs. And together with the da Danish organ from Svenborg, in 10 days we actually played on six different instruments. Very intensive schedule. Uh, so in, uh, in Latvia we were invited to play in um, organ music festival um, in the little um, village church called uh, Zlekas and um, it's spelled Z L E K A S, -S. and uh, our friend organ builder Janis Kalnins is a pastor in both parishes in Zlekas and in Ugale nearby village in Lutheran parishes and um, both are historical uh, monuments and uh, Ugale has the oldest um, preserved pipe organ in the Baltic countries from 1701 built by Cornelius Ranius to manual instrument which we were very happy to try. We heard many stories about it but never actually had a chance to visit Yanis. Yes, and finally we could see that no eagle sitting on the top of organ facade. With movable wings. Yes, and it's, it's funny because uh, when I first saw the picture of this organ, I thought that it's a duck, not an eagle. And our friend recently commented that that eagle looks like a goose. So really funny. A little bit too fat to be an eagle, but anyway, I guess maybe you know the the master who made all these carvings uh, haven't seen a real eagle. Right. And in general, this um, trip was so great that we could actually try out so many uh, different kinds of instruments, old and new, large and small. For example, we played a recital in Zlekas on a two-manual uh, romantic uh, Hermann organ uh, which it's actually a medium sized instrument but from 19th century 1875 and uh, it has quite wide uh, pedal board right we had to adapt and now after this trip uh, I'm making all kinds of mistakes while playing my our own pedal board at home because uh, it's much narrower. Well, yes, and you know, while playing with uh, romantic organ in Zlekas, for me the hardest thing was you know, that I could see very well the score because the light was going straight up into my eyes at the eyes level. But like pedal board was pitch black. Like a black hole, and uh, you know, it's uh, such a disbalance. It was really hard to 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 manage because of that. Otherwise, like uh, no action, and everything works really well. And but uh, the church was really cold. Yes, yes. Even and though it was midsummer, it's unbelievable because you no, know, after you no know, playing like in Warsaw and in Latvia and in Lithuania and with the splink in Lviv. I really didn't think it might be as cold, so I just brought like uh, the, my festive blouse with uh, short sleeves <laughs> and I finished up, you know, putting my street jacket on during recital because otherwise I could not be able to play. It's as cold as uh, in early spring in Lithuania, in churches. True. Um, but we um, we were glad that we selected really appropriate program um, for this uh, concert in Zlekas, uh, consisting of music 
of German Romantic composers and um, it worked really, really great. Uh, Mozart Fantasia worked also very well. We played it on one manual, mm -hmm. like in Warsaw. And uh, I played uh, my own suite, uh, St. John's suite. Uh, some of the movements were dedicated to the Latvian friends that we knew. Yes, but I think that the best on the program sounded, you know, Mankel's fantasy in E flat major. Swedish music, yes, Swedish yes, romantic music. Yes, that I think really projected very well too. But all, of course, and Schumann and Reiber that we played sounded wonderful too. And then uh, the next day we we went to his uh, to Janis's church service, listened to uh, church to service in Ugale. In Ugale. And we listened to how Ugales organ sounds uh, during church service. Klaus Berg's organist um, and also organ builder, organ builder, student of Janis, is organist there and playing uh, church music. So we were delighted to hear some really beautiful sounds. Yes, and this guy is really uh, amazing, amazing person, and really really worth knowing and finding out about his works because actually he was still a child, still a teenager um, when he built his own organ at home. Uh, he was 15 when he started and 16 when we, he finished. So it's it's really amazing. And he is now 18 years old and uh, works in uh, both in Ugale and in Zlekas. As churches. a church organist? Uh, uh, studies organ in playing Ventspils. in Ventspils and, uh, uh, and help, he, helps he, build he, organs he, for, yes. for Janis' workshop. Yes, he works in Janis Kalin's workshop. Uh, so we were glad to meet him as well. And after that service we actually had a nice chance to try out and record on this oldest Baltic, Baltic countries organ. Well, and uh, what did you find the most remarkable about that organ with us? Changing stops with both hands. It, otherwise, it's impossible to pull the yes, stop handle. And both it's, hands. Yes, it's very tricky, especially, you know, to pull out the stop knob uh, for the root positive. Because in order to do that, you basically have to be at the same level as the stop knob is. If you will stand a little bit higher than it is, you won't be able to pull it out. Maybe this instrument requires, I don't know, m more restoration than it currently has. So after, after it's finished, maybe uh, stop changing will not be such a problem, mm -hmm. but... Yes, and you know, it says a lot about uh, its its organ builder because there are some, some very bizarre features on this instrument. How did you like the pedal board with this? Pedal board was probably the most, the widest that I ever played. I don't think there is a wider pedal board anywhere in the world. It's from C to E, so more than uh, two octaves, but uh, there is a short octave C, D, E at the, be at the beginning without any sharps. Uh, but you know, like uh, traditionally when you have um, short octave, it's meant to save space. <laughs> so they visually they would have uh, sharps, uh, but uh, if you press C sharp, it would sound like D. Uh, on this organ, all the keys are here, diatonic keys, C, D, mm. E, but uh, C sharp and D sharp are just simply omitted. So basically you are playing just the white keys for the first four notes, C, D, E, F. And uh, the distances between them is wider than a little bit usual. And in general, you cannot actually reach the ends of the... <laughs> of the pedal board because it's very wide until treble E. And if you, let's say, try to play with both feet two octaves apart, C, C to it's C, impossible. it's impossible. Osher, for example, had to try C minor 
Prelude and Fugue by J.S. Bach, BWV 5. The first page, you know. 5.46. And... Um, it has that big leap without any pauses. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You have to actually to reduce the pedal part. To do, instead of, let's see, two octaves, to play an octave. And no, to really to work on, 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 on the pedal part. Right. Because it's just simply physically impossible. Even with us who has much longer legs than I do, could not do jumps like that. It, basically, what I can say is playing this organ uh, with ease requires amazing mastery. Yes, it really does. Because somehow the hard work is really deep into the facade. So, for example, me reaching down the pedal board and playing on the hard work, I, I use the full length of my arm. I have to stretch it as much as I can. And then after... But the sound is... Amazing, yes. Oh, the sound, the sound is, is amazing. The sound, yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing organ with such an ornate facade and it w works such uh, so perfectly in the church, in ensemble with ornate uh, altar. It's, it's just an unbelievable piece of art. But I think, you know, it's very good that we tried this uh, organ out, but we haven't played recital on it yet, because if now we will get a chance to play it... In we the will, future. Yes, we will know how to select you know, the repertoire, because, you know, it requires some untraditional decisions and adjustments. Uh, and, you know, like, like to be um, morally <laughs> prepared... Right. Mentally prepared. And after Ugale, we went um, to Ventspils to modern concert hall. It's called uh, Concert Hall uh, Latvia. Um, recently built organ by Kleis in 2018, probably. Or 19. Actually, it was in Finnish uh, right before pandemic he hit the world. So. It has four manuals and it's in it has ultra modern design with all the bells and whistles of the uh, modern concert organ that it's supposed to have. All the combination, uh, Zetzer's computer action, everything is very convenient for the performer. But uh, the thing that was really scary to me, I'm really afraid of heights. And uh, this organ is quite high up, the console. And, and uh, for, for example, if you assist somebody, let's say turning pages, then it's really scary because there is like a choir, choir stairs, yes. And uh, it doesn't have any... Uh, rails. Yes, so it's really handrails. It's really scary because you can just fall down and you know, die or injure yourself. And you know, it was mm, very interesting after you know playing on two historical organs to sit down and play on this ultra modern instrument. Well, it's I what I found out. Um, I think that it would be very well suited for. Probably playing together with uh, with an orchestra. Yes, it, it's rather loud, so yes, with uh, an orchestra, it's powerful enough. And uh, maybe to do some some music with different ensembles, and of course for modern music. I don't think that like historical uh, repertoire would sound well on it. Not really. You played, I think, um, Drucken Müller uh, on it, right? One piece. Yes, yes. But um, it was just for fun. It wasn't just. Yes, yes. It wasn't historically accurate. Yes. So it's 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 a very different experience from Zlekas and Ugale. And then we moved from Ventspils to Liepaja. For three days, we relaxed there. Uh, <laughs> Do you call it relaxation? 
Well, not really, because we played two different organs there in two, in three days. Well, actually in two days, because we just arrived on Sunday evening and we were tired, so I consider uh, spending Liapaya two days, Monday and Tuesday. Basically, basically the organ that we first tried in Liepaja's Holy Trinity Cathedral, it's a Lutheran cathedral, it has the largest um, tracker action organ in the world. And in 1885, when it was completed, it, it was the largest organ in the world in general. It's a magnificent 131 stop instrument uh, built by several organ builders. Let me just uh, f remember all of them. Um, uh, builders that uh, that worked on this instrument for for decades was Joachim Conzius, both Hermans and Gruneberg, and of course Janis Kalnins facilitated this fantastic visit. And it was an amazing experience to spend two hours on such a gigantic historical instrument and to record and uh, to try it out. I played this instrument three times before during recitals, but it was the first time for OSHA. So, OSHA, tell us about your experience. <laughs> it's really big. It's really big. And I could play on the first, on the second, and on the fourth keyboard, but I could hardly reach the fourth keyboard, so I haven't used it. But if I would have to play the fourth uh, keyboard during recital, I would just add the coupler and play it, uh, you know, the stops from the fourth manual on the third manual. But uh, but it's it's a great experience, you know. Even finding up the right stops is a challenge on this organ, because it it, it arranged in a really tricky way. It seems like not having any log logic at all, and it has all these colorful uh, stop knobs. <laughs> but you know, really. Really, really funny, and I'm just thinking, what if you know an organist is color blind? How he or she might, you know, orientate in such a case. And and another amazing things that I I have never seen so many ventils in one place, like stacks and stacks, you know, rows of ventils, organ ventils. I think it has twelve ventils in general. And um, the reason that we, we see this um, bizarre layout of stops seemingly uh, without any order is because this organ was built um, throughout uh, decades, basically, and never, never actually uh, ran, um, um, adapted or never actually renovated but always enlarged 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 and made it bigger 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 mm, so it's even larger than riga's cathedral organ the, which was actually a rival instrument for them uh, by the time it was finished uh, riga's is of course more famous now valker organ with 128 stops but uh, but this uh, Liepaja's organ is larger, with 131 stops. Yes, another uh, thing is that I don't think I have ever played such a heavy um, pedal board. Yes, because it doesn't have Barker machine, so it all it's all mechanical and uh, it has uh, several ventils, as Yanis uh, explained to us. Uh, for each key, it, there are several ventils to push. So it's really heavy. So there are basically many winches for pedal. Yes. For each pedal division. So it's a really, you know, tracker monster. And therefore, actually, we see probably uh, some pedal stops in one spot, some in another spot on the console, some some over there, some some over there. 
the same as with Hauptwerk, many, many probably vent ventils and uh, many wind chests as well. But uh, Hauptwerk has Barker machine, so it's easier yes, to it's press. Yes, it's easier, yes, definitely. But it's a wonderful experience, truly amazing. Right. Very, very unique instrument. And um, then we to finish our Latvian trip, uh, we unexpectedly decided to ask for possibility to play uh, the two manual and pedal 28 stop instrument at the Roman Catholic Cathedral, uh, St. J uh, James's Cathedral in Liepoja. It was open b because it was um, Assumption Day for Catholics, it's a festivity, so there was uh, an evening mass uh, being prepared, but there was no organist, there was no other... Uh, no priest, no, no bishop, priest, so, so there was only one old lady who was, you know, selling... Uh, candles, candles and, and uh, rosaries and... Religi religious yes. items. Yes, and we asked about her permission, you know, to get on the organ loft and she said no she cannot do that because no we need to ask permission for the priest or the bishop. bishop and she tried to call the bishop and the priest but nobody answered her calls so and so finally Yanis helped uh, her to convince over the phone over the phone yeah and and she finally let us in because she knew him because he had been there a few years ago did some 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 adjustments for the organ and uh, and we tried it out so what do you think about this organ if if it was um, uh, restored or at least renovated uh, it would have been really a beautiful pneumatic instrument but of course uh, now we only could play the the keyboards because the pedals had um, one or two uh, sticky sticky keys or broken keys. Yes, maybe. actually there was no. The funny thing, when we sat down at this organ, I saw, I noticed on the pedal board that there was like, um, you know, mask. Like, you no know, from... Medical mask. Med well, it wasn't like maybe medical, but uh, I guess it's from the times of pandemic and there was like some kind of a thick brochure also put down stuck down into the one of the pedal keys and and i thought we shouldn't probably touch it but but we did somehow and that was a mistake because when that key just started to sound yeah, it's it's broken basically. So so this brochure and this mask kept it from getting uh, lower, lower and uh, starting to sound. So, so and because I think it was like uh, low A, yes, uh, you could not use neither uh, no surrounding you no know, keys, no G, no G sharp or A flat, no A, no B flat, and no B. So. Then what's the point of using pedals if you cannot use, you know, like so many, many, many pedal keys? So we just played manual stuff. And I and improvised of course, a little uh, bit on, on, on two notes, C and F. And we tried, you know, to play softly that, you no know, people could pray because, you no, know, it's Catholic church. It was really dark and really mysterious. Very beautiful church, by the way. It's really beautiful. It has more than one tower, not as, um, as ever the Lutheran church that we saw, and that uh, usually has only one tower. So really, really nice, and organ facade very nice too. But uh, really this instrument needs, you know, a lot of, of, of work. In uh, renovation. Yes. So, to summarize our summer experience, it was summer really active, uh, full of concerts. Uh, we also played uh, some Lithuanian organs, and uh, between that time, 
and uh, harmonium reed organ concert too but uh, we wanted to tell you about our concert trips abroad in this uh, conversation so thank you so much guys uh, for listening uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode please send us more of our questions we love helping you grow and remember when you practice miracles happen this podcast is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online. It has hundreds of courses, coaching and practice materials for every area of organ playing, thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. Total Organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, Develop your sight reading skills, improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course, you will get the first month for free too. You can cancel anytime. If you need one-on-one coaching, you can check out our page on Buy Me A Coffee platform. Find out more at buymeacoffee.com slash organduo.